Ladies and gentlemen, welcome for, to a new series which I'm doing. And this one is based on a ray calc. And we are going to go through from start to finish of how to literally build a show on a ray calc. And then the end goal eventually is to put it into R1. And hopefully, fingers crossed, put it into action in real life. So today, the goal is to design a simple venue. So let's start. First things first, whenever you open a red calc, I'm using version uh, V10, uh, V10.14 to be exact. If you go over to settings and then uh, project, or oh, let's, what should we call this? Hmm. Um, simple pool. Let's go on to the next one. So, on this on this tab, you've got multiple different choices uh, depending on your needs. Um, because we're very simple, using very simple, um, creating a very simple venue, we're not going to really need. Um, array processing so that could be turned off um, level avoidance we're not going to use because that's a long array, array processing array site uh, we don't use anyway um, and array site is literally a it's an inclinometer that you put onto um, bump bars for line arrays um, which you plug directly into um, array calc and R1. Noise calc we talked about in the previous video, and we're not going to use that. Then audio networking, this is good to uh, enable um, because you get to hook up to a DS10, which is their network bridge, which links R1 to the amplifiers. Soundscape. We're not going to be using Soundscape as it's their 3D immersive uh, system. Um, and then you've also got uh, custom rigging, but we're just going to stick with their standard sets of uh, rigging to keep things easy. Units. Now, depending where you are from in the world, depends what measuring units and temperature units you want to use. I am going to stick with metric and with Celsius. On the R1 project tab, this is quite important. This will set whatever you, when you import it into R1, this will set what, how it is shown and set up. Um, so I'm going to keep it um, just the default of what it is. Here's a fun one. If you want to set a password for your project so other people don't mess around with it, then here's the screen to do so. I'm not going to bother. The last tab, which is an actual very important tab, is of course your air absorption and your temperature. This is important for noise calc. Um, however, it, if you know you're going into a relatively cold environment or you're going to a really hot environment, um, and you can, if you look out on go, go online, have a look at the average temperature for that period of time um, in that country then you can always use that and input it into here um, so then you your project will be correct to that place you're having your event right start let's go over to venue and this is where we are going to create our venue this is where you build, uh, you take the measurements on site, and this is where you design the actual, you take this measurement and you build it within this uh, screen. So the first thing you want to do is come up to this plus sign up here, and this is where you start um, to add planes in. So we're going to have uh, a very simple venue. So we're just going to go for the quadrangular uh, plane and this is where it automatically puts it in as so down on here 
we're going to go and do some planning ahead and we're going to label this so then especially when it gets further down the line and you're doing extremely large complicated complicated venues you can you know what plane is what so i'm just going to put this as audience so depth i've gone and actually done a bit of research prior to this and there's a local hall to me which i am going to copy which is 17.15 deep by 8.2 wide right let's just finish this and change it now you may have noticed on under depth you only have the one box and then on the width you have two the reason is because um the way the array character set out is that the stage will always kind of be on the left hand side and then go across and in some venues you from where the stage is you have diagonal walls and it gives the option to be more precise uh, with the width and be able to replicate those diagonal walls or um, if you've got maybe an odd structure there you can replicate that as well um, the stage uh, is always going to be the center and kind of facing this way. So that's what we're going to do. Automatically, the first the listening plane is set at 1.7 meters, which is the um, which is the height of uh, the average height of the human ear. One of the nice things, which not sure i'm going to probably do in this episode um however you've got the option to edit the points to really control where you you can make it more accurate to the actual venue you're designing um or to the actual real life venue you know you're going into the next step from this simple layout which is going to be our main audience area let's add a simple stage for that we go back up to our plus and for this one we want to do a cuboid automatically i'm not too sure why it sets it at 10 by 10 by 10 of course we do not need that so we are going to put it at let's say a four meter depth we are going to match the width of the room, which is 8.2. Um, standard height is either going to be one or two meters. Now, I'm because I'm basing this off a very simple gig or a very simple kind of event where a lot of these stages are um, brought in from or hired in from a company and they're usually not that high. So I'm going to put it at one meter high. One of the nice things about Array Calc is that down here you can have your side view. So you can make sure that everything is where it should be. Not just from the top but from the side as well. You can also click and drag stuff around on here. Which then also changes the X y point on the left hand side so i'm just going to reset that all back to zero so it lines up with our zero point so i am now going to change the name of this to our stage And I am also going to recolor it so then it is clearer. Change it to red. There we go. The other options you've got on here is to hide stuff. So you could put in structures like a wall 
or something just to get a boundary of you know there's something there or pillar um, that you know you're not going to be able to place stuff um, or even the opposite maybe that's a place that you could potentially put stuff so you have the option to show it or not show it you can have it be transparent and you can lock it in position meaning it's transparent does that which makes it lovely what a very simple setup now what I am going to do is I'm going to come back up here plus again I am going to click cuboid I am going to make it one by one and then I am going to drag it so then it's four meters by four meters oh no it's not quite right maybe three and a half Oh, let's zoom in and see if that's, that's close. It is close. Uh, oh, come on. Right, and then I can copy and I should be able to. There, over here. Right, so I've got this in position. As I want to put one the other side, I am going to go over here to the right. And there's a button that says duplicate. Or I can mirror it on the x-axis. So let's mirror it on the x-axis, which gives puts it in exactly the same position or on the opposite side of our x-axis. Like so. Um, I'm also going to change the height of it in just a sec but let's do some let's rename it uh, front of house uh, hmm front of house we are going to rename it cross for proscenium and then right and then this one I'm going to call cross left. These I'm going to make a different color. Let's go, let's be really boring. Let's go brown. I'm going to make this one exactly the same color. Let's change the height from 10 meters to 3 meters. Standard height of a room. But potentially this one could be higher, maybe four or five meters. Actually, let's change it to five meters, make it a little easier. Give us a bit more headroom um, to potentially hang stuff. You've also got the option to put it as a listing plane, obstacle or structure. I am going to change both of these to structure. Next, we are going to just lock them in place. The main difference, there isn't actually a massive difference between structure and obstacle. The only difference is one is a wire frame and the other is just a solid, um, solid material. So I am going to put them both to obstacle, lock them into place. The next thing I am going to do, so I'm going to come back up to my audience plane. 
unlock it and because it's taking up the whole area I actually want to bring it down to the edge of the stage so I can do drag ether drag there or I can change it here as much as it shows as it's flat as on the floor in this view when you go over to do your 3d plot and to calculate the SPL levels uh, it will sit above this venue above the stage um, as the stage is sitting only at one meters one meter and the main audience plane the listening plane is sitting at 1.7 if we wanted to we could go back up to the plus sign go to quadrangular and we could easily go back to and put it to the same shape make sure this is all correct make that as well um, then you can also keep it as 1.7 or if you know your potential performers are going to be sitting down then you can change it to 1.2 I'm going to keep it at 1.7 the next best step once you've stage listening lock that in place the next best step is to move the origin down here all this does is move this point this yellow dot to wherever you set it all I'm going to do to change it is I know I need to move it four meters on the x-axis so four meters move origin and if you want to put it back you just go minus four meters but let's keep it at that which will get us ready for when we add sources that is the simple venue complete in the next episode we are going to add some speakers and then we are going to get them in the correct position thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it hit the like button if you didn't hit the thumbs down if you didn't like it or if you liked it leave a comment tell me why feedback is always welcome don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.